Hello! Yay, it's really nice to Hi! Hello! Hey! It sure is nice to be here! Hello! Hello! Hi! Hi, I'm Spider Rabbit! Hello. I'm Spider Rabbit. I brought some things to show you. I've uh, I've got them right here. I got a spoon, <laughs> a really pretty spoon. This is a whole entree. Don't need no fries with that steak. That's what we look like a buffet. It's that diet, get that way. Such a Jimmy Craig, put some seconds on my plate. Fuck, wait, watch us put some seconds on my plate. Fuck that slim fast when you work that ass when you work that bad when you move that low. Let's see that in the room. This is my uh. Uh. Oh, the full bag. Yeah. 
It's my phone. Hi. This is my hat. Hi. <laughs> Oh. Hey, it's, it's really nice to be here. This is my life. Hi, I'm Spider Rabbit. This is my spoon. And this is my web. I'm Spider Rabbit. Hi. Hi. Uh, hi. Oh. Yes. Put my web up. I never see you when you jump over the. You think I never see you when you accidentally pull me out. Make your puppy a bit of Why a accidentally talk? You should cry and not be I'm you 
I take you out, Daniel. I take you out, Daniel. Rocky, you met me at one and I told me to was Nanny go to company. Then it missed. I'm Spider Rabbit. This is my way. I got some. Carrots in my devil bag. Oh, Taurus! I'm Spider Rabbit! Hi! Hi! I got some nice things in my duff bag.
place with my left song. This is my hat, this is my spoon, this is my duffel bag, and this is my web. I, I'm Spider Rabbit. I'm gonna get a drink, I'm gonna get a drink, I'm gonna get a drink, and make you drink, 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 I'm gonna get a drink, I'm gonna get a drink, 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 I'm gonna get a drink, I'm gonna get a drink. This is an anger. Drink a drink, drink a drink, drink a drink. I'm gonna get a drink, drink a drink, drink a drink, drink a drink. drink, drink, drink. <laughs> Another hand. <Yeah. laughs> drink a drink, drink a drink, drink a drink, drink. I'm gonna get a drink, I'm gonna get a drink, I'm gonna. This is a hand drink. <laughs> Thank you. 
we have the influence Electric saw. And these are the carrots. I'm Spider Rabbit. I hate war. I'm Spider Rabbit. There. Carrots make me thirsty. And we get something to drink. Dinky, 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 This is a hand in hand. Is a scholarship to the ancient mystic order of Rosicrucians. <laughs>
This is a kidney. Ah, I. I'm Spider Rabbit. Yeah, I'm going to see you first game. Hi, I'm a spider web. This is my electric stop. I got my electric stop for Christmas. This is my hat. This is my stool. I'm Spider Rabbit. I hate the door. Now it's going to make me really, 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 really,
Parents may be thirsty. This is my electric saw. This is my duffel bag. I've got some nice things in my duffel bag. <clears throat> Here is a signed copy of my Tom. <laughs> Here is a plastic bag. <laughs> And here is a collapsible double. Uh, work makes me There's another one. It's too small. <laughs> I can't find it. Work makes me hungry. Carrots. Work really makes me hungry. Hi. Hi. I'm fired <laughs>
Yeah, he's free mics. So, um, welcome everybody. Can you do it? We need this. Thank you. And uh, I mean, we'll talk with you guys. And um, first of all, I think another round of applause. With all kinds of great performance. Thank 
great work in progress based on a poem out of the 70s and uh, Tony and that we'll talk a bit more. Thank you. Thank you for sitting up here with uh, sweaty, my, my sweaty, bloody self. It's my pleasure, really. And sweaty, bloody Dan. You can't see the sweat in the blood, but it's there. It's there. Well, Dan, if you want to um, maybe tell us uh, indeed the origin of the of the work. Uh, it, it, that's actually a Tony question. Tony Tony brought the play. Tony and I had done Ubu together, which we start, which we did here first. Yeah, um, so it's cool to once again be doing a work in progress here at uh, Prelude. It's exciting, and we Prelude is con it continued being a vital thing. I mean, look at all of us here; it's fantastic. It's very exciting. Thank you. And yeah, and we have like a. We were talking earlier about how um, between the two of us, like we like a, a third thing happens that's not like what I do without Tony, and not like what Tony does without me. And I was saying earlier, it's like you know how some superheroes or supervillains get like a pill or a thing, and that turns them into the superhero or the supervillain. So we were saying that uh, I'm I turn Tony into a superhero, and he turns me into a supervillain, yes, and like yeah, that. Yeah. So we so for, that and vice versa, and vice versa. And so we just been sort of like looking for what was our thing after. Ubu, and then Tony found this play. So the history of this play in me is that uh, Michael McClure was uh, a very well-known poet who also had a really robust play rank where he, his plays won several uh, Obies. And uh, he was a friend of my father's. And my dad um, did a revival of Spider Rabbit with the great uh, comic actor and uh, New York icon, Taylor Mead. So I saw this show with Taylor Mead doing this play when I was, must, I think about 16 or 17, and it freaked me out. I mean, I thought it was a pretty hip 16 year old, but boy, I was not ready for Taylor in this role, uh, eating brains. And I think the play was about an hour longer because he just like, he take, took uh, he took uh, advantage of the repetitious link, nature of the language. And he just basically went in circles for two hours. And uh, it was very, very deep. And it was just me, a couple of very, very confused senior citizens from the uh, residence hall upstairs and this beautiful supermodel. She was like uh, kind of statuesque, uh, uh, a Grace Jones-like woman who laughed at every single thing that Taylor said. And so Taylor would, of course, would do instant encores for her of all the bits, which is why the show lasted so long. And I really, you know, it really freaked me out and burned my brains and I've been having it in my my head for like 30 years and it feels like whenever I have a crazy idea or a crazy thing that influenced me during my teenage years it seems like I have to come up I have to ask Dan to do it with me because Ubu was also something like you know it was the sort of thing you're playing Per Ubu Records the band Per Ubu that's named after Ubu Wah and you uh you are reading the play and you're like going, <laughs> wouldn't it be fun to put the songs with the play? And so only the only person dumb enough to help me with that is Dan, because he shares, he can get back to that sense of teenage idiocy with me. And uh, we go that out of each other. So I'm sorry, uh, you had a hand up. Did you want to ask a question now? Or you want to, yeah. So nice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's called acting, darling. <laughs> but no, I mean, like, I'm a nice guy, but being a supposed nice, nice person in today's society, it takes a lot of work. You know, I take a lot. Of, I, I spend a lot of time trying to be a decent person. So I think everybody works. If they try to work hard in it, they have a secret, um, you know, uh, alternate self that is filled with all the resentments and violence. But that's what this play is about. Spider Rabbit is very nice, cuddly figure, but he has the other Spider Rabbit inside of us. And we're all, we all take, we all participants in this culture and we're all living this and we're having these cushy, wonderful lives, but we're all deeply, deeply invested in violence just because we're part of the system. That's what the play is, I think. It's about like, what is, what, what, who is the spider inside of you? We all have to, yeah, we all have to talk. We all have rabbits. We all have spiders. Is the spider really evil? Is it the rabbit that's really evil? I don't know. I love the fact that this play asks questions. It doesn't necessarily provide answers. And I think that's really, really key to what I think is important work. I mean, yeah, it's, you know. it's, it's like unfortunately relevant. 
This and a, was and written a big for way. Vietnam when we first workshop this uh, back in uh, spring of last year. Ukraine had just started, and now everything that's happening in Israel and Gaza, it's like, it's uh, unfortunately the uh, the buried violence in all society is like, unfortunately, continuously fucking relevant. Mm -hmm. No. Well, I don't know. What, had, what questions did you get? Well, I think I think it's I think that's up to everybody who sees it. I don't think it's one set of questions. I think it depends on what it makes you ask. So then, do you want to say what you wanted to convey yourself with this staging? I mean, I'm I'm I agree with I have a Tony and I link up a lot on the like it takes work to be a good person, um, and that's a kind of a recurring theme for me, and. I get really interested when something makes me very uncomfortable and I'm like, ooh, that's a little like that's that's a little too close to home or that's like that's that's letting a little too much out in public um, or that like that makes me actually like want to cry or that I find you know, like anything that pushes it beyond the comfortable or like the 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 pedestrian everyday self. Um, and this play really asks you to do that and we found a lot that like on the first read it's not it's not this you have to really like dig into every single moment and see what's going on with it um and it was just for me as like a director it's we have the shorthand and the relationship that like i kind of know what Tony's going to do next and he kind of knows what I'm going to do next and we're both headed in that direction and we kind of bounce off each other really well so it's just about figuring out like that zone and we're very comfortable being awful hmm. you know Necessary with this yeah but it's like it's we're really we're really comfortable being like this is this is not a pleasant part of me and then also like and now here's a dumb joke um which I think balances it out so that was a really great place to to explore that with uh, Ubu, we had all these great collaborators like Julie Ellis Muse and uh, uh, our music director, Vera Baron, and uh, we had a whole band. There was this a big, huge show. We had dancing. We had dancers. We It was, it was a full band. Uh, but this was just me and Dan uh, in his studio up in upstate New York, just basically butting heads for a week. His hand. So it was really, really great. It was a different experience for us to just like, it was really intimate. Uh, just the two of us like working it out. So that was a really great way to work. So, you know, we're like looking for new uh, horizons to do in this collaboration. This is a great thing to try out. It's just like, what if we just made something just the two of us? Um, before maybe I open the questions to the public, I just wanted to say that to me, watching this for the first time, not doing, not knowing any of it, is a mixture of Beckett and Lynch, David Lynch and Samuel Beckett. And it just goes all over. It's amazing. Great work. Thanks. Perhaps any uh, reaction, questions? Stunned. That all channeling that uh, performance you saw on the screen, like what, when you're doing I think there are aspects of Taylor that um, will have made deep, deep impressions on me. But Taylor Mead is a unique comic figure, you know, and I knew Taylor and he continued to be a friend of mine too. So I think it's there, but um, I had to find my own way. So it's really more about like my different, like all my sort of like childish awkwardness that I, you know, I'm not only working really hard to be a good person, I'm also really working hard to sort of like bury my really awkward child self. And so this was an amazing place to try to reaccess all that and to glory in being able to just sort of be like silly and, you know, and just like awkward and not know where to stand and all that stuff and to allow myself to go there was actually kind of deeply therapeutic uh yeah um taylor had just like an incredibly specific uh comic persona that was just him so you know like i think uh he, he was a deep inspiration but i couldn't i couldn't help to copy him any other Well, we worked for about a week and then we came down to the city and we worked for about another week and then we did a workshop just in my, 
I have a little home theater that seats 22. So we did it there. And then we sort of put it away for a while. And this was a great opportunity to uh, get it up again. So we then worked another week. So yeah, I'd say that the the, the primary uh, thing was two weeks, a week back in uh, the winter of 2022 and a week here re, uh, reconnecting it and revitalizing. During that period, like what was the specific, like are there like certain moments that really, really changed during that process that you like felt like, okay, this is what we want it to be and like that it was a big shift? I think it's really about when we kind of began to define the split yeah. Yeah. We really figured out the, like the split personality or there's really three personalities. There's like the evil. I, I don't want to do that. There's, there's the, there's like the spider who's like the scarier dude and there's the rabbit. And then there's the ones that get me the most. There's the just Tony. Like there's like, I think my favorite moment is when he drops everything and just goes like, I am really glad to be here. And it's just him. And like, to me, that's the, that's kind of like the freakiest part. So it was really, we did a lot of work to define what those, when those three personalities were in charge and, and, and then to not just make it like easy to switch, but like that whole eating the kidney and the, like the, the blood, like all that, like, how do you really go into like how awful it is to turn into your awful self or how awful it is to like wake up and look around and be like oh fuck you know like just and to not gloss over any of those moments so it was really just defining those and really digging we also uh really go for like what does this thing want to be as opposed to what do we want it to be so as soon as we got to the place of being able to have the piece tell us what to do we we're like okay now we're now we're on now we can dig deeper and there was stuff we added this week but we didn't radically change anything we just sort of like dug deeper in a lot of the um in the underscoring uh for this week we added all of the war sounds mm -hmm. um which again like i'm not happy about you know like that sucks that sucks that that made sense to add that but it made sense sorry i'm doing the thing um yeah, but it's like, uh, this is like an opportunity to actually like deal with shit that we're dealing with. So that that was new. Um, and and Dan built all the sound cues. So it was kind of like we said, okay, we're technically Dan's going to do the sound, which of course is a, <clears throat> a huge element. And I did the video and uh, my partner, the great Leanne Brown played the vision. So that's yeah. also, you know. I said, like, who do I want to come out of the heavens and chastise me? It's like, baby, could you do this for me, please? And so that was that was that was great. And I'm like, I'm also very much like largely a choreographer. So I just always like music is just always kind of happening in rehearsal. So that get creates like the atmosphere for us a lot. Yeah. Did you have a thing or did you we have two things? It was back then. Like oh yeah, yeah. So he didn't like that I asked the kind of question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, but the point is that he might want us to do this again to I spent a lot of time around people doing now. Yeah, well, I mean. Yeah, there's there are there are trigger warnings on the uh, website. I have complicated feelings about trigger warnings, but we still provided that. Yeah. Thank you. I, I feel like with the performance, but it's something so complicated. And I think that's an issue that how you broke it down into these uh, three parts because I really thought that it was the heaviest when Tony, when your eyes were freaking the fuck or something, freaking me out. You can say it backwards. <laughs> uh, but then the interesting part is that where I felt, I mean, I didn't say triggered, but where I felt um, uncomfortable was where it just does a shoot. It's like, especially this week, like, especially this week, where, it, where the references were too referential and so too light handed, like throwing mind pump, you know, watching an, an East European Jew just throwing mind pump away. It's it's un 
it's almost meaningless this week. And I'm wondering if it's different other weeks. No, I know, so this is a part of the, this isn't this script. This is a reference. This is what he put into it in 1970. Yeah. So the question is then, do we remove it? Exactly. So and, and in general, I think that that's such an interesting question with these keys because uh, some of it, it, it like um, so, some of it did feel a form of a formally over a different time. And then when you become alive on stage, it's it's so much more powerful to me. Mm -hmm. And and I'm wondering, like, you know, for instance, the granny, so I'm, I'm, I get it. Am I making any sense? But, but I get it. Yeah. So, so what I'm trying to say, I guess, is that there are a lot of theatrical gestures that that re very referential this week or any other week, and those are the ones that that th there is a semiotics of violence, and then you yeah. embody violence, and the semiotics. Yeah. I'm wondering if it adds something or if the semiotics is is brings it like create something super more superficial than your embodied violence. I don't know. I mean, I guess that's a critique of the play itself. The mm -hmm. play we're building the whole thing on the play. For me, uh, he has this duffel bag. And he has all these elements in the duffel bag that then start, start coming these buried, buried things. Mm -hmm. And I feel that that is about um, our consciousnesses and that even if we're trying to say, okay, well, things like grenades, oh, that's so obvious. My God, that's so obvious. But we carry all this obvious bullshit in us. We're repositories of the culture. The culture just drops the shit in us and we keep it in our duffel bags. And, uh, you know, um, so that's for me the metaphor. And I think that's an alive metaphor, mm -hmm. you know, um, whether, you know, um, it's, it, you know, it's, it's a very blunt piece. So um, I could understand like feeling that it's too blunt or too obvious, but, you know, that's just what it is. I guess my answer is that probably this week it's, it's different because there are grenades. I think yeah. there's something about it's too it's too too light. This week. Um, no, well, I mean, or what do we, what do we do theater for? Why are we even doing this if we can't? If we're saying that, oh, we can't. I'm, I'm, listen, I really I really respect your what you're saying, and I'm not trying to say that I I think you're wrong, but I feel like what's the answer? Oh, we we shouldn't do this. We shouldn't do theater at this moment because it would be wrong or too light. I mean, I think that the reason why I'm in this is because I believe that working in the theater is a machine for empathy and healing and that we do these things in order to start conversations and uh, you know, try to process all this shit rather than just sitting and like receiving the horrible images and not having a place to come together and express all of it. So um, it's it. Um, I think it's a great question to ask. Uh, I firmly believe that the point is for us to continue to do work and continue to ask these hard questions of ourselves. And there's there's never not grenades. Yeah, yeah but so I, know, I, this conversation started with someone that very triggered. Yeah, and I do think that I'm trying to understand that. That's also part of theater. And so when I said that maybe it's this week I was more responding to myself than yeah. you actually. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, it's a big question. I did just I personally think that the ultimate answer to that is that we just fucking sorry. We just stop doing stuff. And I'm um, I don't believe in that. Just to add, there's for me. When I experience your performance, whatever the blood, the horror, there is also a level of joy, of uh, a visceral sense of excitement that I feel, which is um, you might be doing the most horrible thing, but somehow I'm lifted up by it, I'm excited by it. So I just I feel like there's that side to to it as well. That's uh, that's important. Uh, also, I want to thank you very much for being here. I just I want to express love to you right now. And I want to say that um, I know this is a very, very difficult piece. And I want to thank you for being here with me and sharing the experience with me. And uh, um, I just want to say if you want to continue to talk it's about the it. the best thing I saw here. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Sorry. Thanks, dude. It's, um, you know, <laughs> yeah, you know, I mean, it's like strong reactions, I think, are uh, a beautiful thing.
you know, so I, I appreciate that you have strong energy. But I say this, I don't mean like this competition or nothing. No. <laughs> yeah, it is. It's been a very like we are getting prelude medals, right? We are getting, the, we're getting the prelude medals. Okay, just making sure. I want that fucking medal. Yeah. And, and one last question, perhaps. So, yes. Anybody? Last question. It's a serious. Yep. Very, it's a very good the, these issues you brought up. So thank you for that. I'm thinking about. Thank you so much, Dan. I'm thinking about the long history of performers and their confrontational relationships to the audience, um, which have often been to generate this kind of ambiguity. They're sometimes ironic relationships. Uh, do any of these figures from history feel like they've been visiting you as you've been working on this or as you look back on it? Like, are there any, I know you were offering a couple icons. We were there. haunted by my father while we were developing the piece. Dad was, uh, so my father, Rip Torn, was good friends with Michael McClure. So um, he passed a couple of years ago. We were upstate looking for props at his friend's house, and your friend sees ghosts, right? Yeah, Ray. Ray, Ray the antiques dealer, sees ghosts. And we were looking for a table. That table we got from Ray's barn. Um, and we were there looking for stuff. And he had, he knew Tony was my friend, that we worked together. No idea who he was or what his last name was. And then... So we walk after we talked to him, we walked in to the his store and he just said, Yeah, so after I walked away from you guys, I saw Rip Torrent walking across the lawn. It was really interesting. And he just started going on talking about it, you know, and I, I didn't say it first, like that's my dad. So and then um, you know, but then uh when we were working on the computer, for some reason we plugged into a soundboard and both of our computers shorted out. Yeah. So um, but I, so I felt like he was like hovering around the project, both being supportive and also a little competitive because, yeah. so, so, you know, so we always offer props to, you know, to Rip and Taylor and Michael, who are all uh, at this point angels who have passed on to the next realm. So thank all of you for, uh, you know, for looking after this piece and being supportive. And then the thing about the thing that got me was the thing about Jen. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, I had thinking a lot about Genesis Purge. Um, saw Ubu and a which, couple of years, which I didn't know this, and I I had come in to tell Tony that I had just been reading this interview, and I'd been thinking about uh, Genesis a bunch. Um, who was people who was the from Psychic TV and Throbbing Gristle, uh, blah blah, and and I had in like 1994, I was a go-go dancer at Limelight at the Pig Face show for Halloween when Jen was guesting, and Jen sang a whole song sitting up on my shoulder, and I was dressed as a Valkyrie. Um, so I and, and then I and then I had known Jay, who was uh, I'm going to get all the pronouns fucked up. Who was them? Who was half of them? Um, half of the we of them. Um, and then I and then I just read this interview where Jen was saying that Burroughs had told them when they first met the your job now is to is to tell me how do we disrupt control and I was like oh fuck right that like I, I and I listened to that interview I was like I'm driving to a fucking farm stand to buy cauliflower and like that's the question I was like right fuck right and I was telling Tony all of this and then he said well uh, we didn't really know that Jen had seen. Ubu sing Zubu. But I never told Dan the story that two years later I was walking on Grand Street and I ran into Jen. They were just walking down Grand Street. Jen came up to me and gave me this big bear hug and said, I saw Ubu. You did it. You should be proud, which is one of the most wonderful moments I've ever had about having a hero yeah. embrace. But Dan didn't hear the story until this week. Yeah. So, um, that it's, it's in terms of that thing, in terms of like that's another of angels. Yeah, we also yeah. give it up to Jenny yeah. Spiorch. And now I think you started here. Yeah, it's exactly. Yeah. So oh fuck yeah! <laughs> yeah. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I think that's it. Thank you Thank so you much for coming out. Thank you for the audience. Thank you so much. Um.